Hey, hey, hey. So today we're going to do a little bit of uh, steganography over um, uh, over social media, number one, and with uh, JP Hyde. That'll be number two. Oh, God, did I just try to log in? So we got some interesting pictures of some cats here. So let's go and we'll show this whole thread. And we're going to just download all these images. Let's call this one. And we'll call this two. <laughs> call this one three. I guess this is a number four. Numero five. And it looks like that one repeated again, but we'll call it number six. So six of these images, they all say meow on them. So take note, I guess. So let's open a terminal window. Eventually. Come on. Come on. Come on. We ain't got no more. So let's get into. Whoa. There's our five images, or six images. So let's just first we'll run steg detect on uh, anything that's a JPEG. And we get two images that look like they might be, or that they, they probably have something in them. So let's scan the rest of them. Um, steg detect with a uh, high, higher sensitivity. So tack S for the sensitivity level and then 10. So we're going to turn the sensitivity all the way up. And we'll do the same thing. Any file that's a JPEG. And so they all pop this time. There's probably a good chance there's something embedded in each of these. Okay, so now, um, if they didn't pop, I would generally check the strings. This is something I always do. So we'll say uh, one dot JPG, pipe it in the head, first 10. So when you see something like this, I tend to know, okay, maybe there was something that was embedded. Um, so, I mean, even going further, if we do file number two, you see some identical strings in the top there. Same thing if we do file number uh, three. Same thing, right? So, a lot of the strings look very similar. So, if that's the case, again, that's a pretty good indication that there might be something in there. So, then also, if you remember, files number four and six were supposed to be identical images. They looked identical, but they're actually one byte off as far as file size. So even though they look identical, for whatever reason, they were the same height and width, but they're one byte off in difference. So that also is another indication that ah, there may be something stored in this file too. Why is it identical, but it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller? Shouldn't it be the same exact size? Yeah. Uh, so going further, we have a pretty good idea. There's something in each of these. It said JP hide, so we'll use JP seek to try and uh, to try and extract it. So the way this works is when you extract with it, you do the file that you're trying to scan. So one.jpg, and then what you want the output to be. If it does find something, what do you want to save that file as? And we'll just call that one asks for a password. Uh, meow was written on every tweet, so bam, we use that. And it looks like it extracted some. We get a file, it's called one. So let's see what it is. It says it's just plain text, so we can cat it out. And it's just a string of what looks like hex. So cool, let's do uh, the rest of the files. So we'll say two and two. Same thing, meow, cool, probably worked. <laughs> so we'll say three and three, meow. 
four and four and we will say meow and of course five and five meow and last but least six meow okay so we have a bunch of files one of the or file extracted from each JPEG basically and it looks like they're, the files we extracted are all the same size so let's just go cat uh, you saw it was in one so there's two three okay so it's probably just hex and all of them so let's clear it and let's do this again go cat one cat two cat three cat four cat five cat six so here's your lines of hex uh, or what seems to be hex so Sometimes what you want to do is maybe you need a hex editor to finish the rest of this. So whatever hex editor you use, great, awesome. I'm just going to copy these strings a one by one. And we're going to make a new file. Let me just paste these in here. Yeah, sure. So it looks like it might be something in there. So let's go a little bit more. Control Shift C to copy it. Bring this back up. And we'll paste this in as well. So yeah. Same thing, we will. Oh, come on, come on now. I could have done this a better way, I'm sure, but I didn't. So, Control Shift C to copy it. Yo. And Control Shift C to copy it again. And paste it in and then the last one, control shift C to copy it, and we'll paste it in. All right, so this big long string of hex, what did it give us? If we look, let's keep going this way, and the decoded text, expand your thinking. You have more than you know, sly talker. Easy, simple. In fact, if you didn't have the decoded text right there, you could even still... You know, save that file as whatever you want. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done, good to go. That's another example of uh, steganography. Uh, again, you can do it over your social media account as long as you understand how the compression works. Uh, for instance, Twitter, they've changed recently, but they used to compress images a certain way. So when you would upload to it, if you hadn't done some prior work, uh, it would ruin anything that was staged inside the file. So you had to take the file, upload it to Twitter, download it from Twitter, stag it, and then re-upload it to Twitter, and then Twitter would see that, hey, I've already been compressed the way I need to, everything's cool, and it would basically ignore it. Um, so here's an example of that, basically. I uploaded six images, embedded six different chunks of one file inside of those images. When you download them all, extract the data, you can put it back together with a hex editor. And now it's, this is the rush to get to the, <laughs> the stop button before I look like an idiot. <laughs>